go to the, the other of the big three through that era. Were you an ECW fan? Okay. Yeah, See, I, I watched... I did watch ECW um, like towards the end of mm -hmm. what when ECW was actually ECW. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I didn't see ECW in like you know ninety three, ninety four. It was really starting. I had no idea about it. the pay per view era started ninety seven, and that's about where I started following. Okay. Uh, so we, this might be a little bit quicker, but that's all right. We could probably run through ECW. Do you have a top five guys that like really represented ECW to you? If you think ECW, who are the mm -hmm. five guys that come to mind? First guy I think of when I think ECW is first two guys I think of are Sandman, mm -hmm. Tommy Dreamer. Absolutely. Um, Tommy Dreamer is the the Sting slash uh, John Cena. I mean, he's the guy. Yeah. In you know, ECW. he's essentially Mister ECW. Yeah, he's you know. the guy there. And then the Sandman, I think. I mean, he's the Stone Cold. Of he ECW. represents what ECW is about. That greatest guy smoking See, cigarettes and drinking beer to the ring, like. He looked like Rutger Hauer and Blade Runner had a baby with Stone Cold Steve Austin, and here was Sandman. It's a fair analysis. <laughs> like, yeah, the blonde hair. Like, like he just looked crazy. The like, Sandman looks like the neighbor that we all have. The one, the, the one that's listening to Molly Hatchet the in the garage. Got a car and, he's, in the and he's in got the, yard. the car that's up on the on the stilts. It's <laughs> yeah. always being worked on, and he's smoking cigarettes and drinking Budweisers. Yeah, lawn needs mowed. Like, lawn probably needs mowed. Is he you? He, he yeah, <laughs> yes, my lawn needs mowed for the people knowing. But yeah, he can't mow the lawn because of the car parts in the yard. He can't yeah, see. And him. he's gonna fix it. He's gonna fix it in about three days. He's gonna be done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, those those two are absolutely they do they that that's ECW for sure. Do you got three more? Um, uh, I mean, obviously Paul Heyman would be on there, but he wasn't a wrestler, um, so I won't count him as my. Number I would count Eric. Bischoff I mean, I put earlier. Eric Bischoff, so yeah, number three, Paul Heyman. I w I might even say Paul Heyman number one because of it was his. Yeah, it was, um, and it was a whole different deal. We talked about the attitude earlier. He was ahead of the curve. He was ahead of the curve on that because, like, ECW was, was started in 93, 94. Extreme, you know. He was well, a little bit ahead of that. Think about it this way. He basically created the Attitude Era because Stone Cold so. Steve Austin Head basically created that character in ECW. Yeah. He went to WWF, yeah, and they turned him into um, the Ringmaster yeah. or something like that. Yeah, and he, he was, was just like, I don't like this. In. And uh, he was, wasn't he with? Ted DiBiase? He was. Ted DiBiase was his manager because they thought he couldn't talk. Yeah. Isn't that and that, something? Yeah. <laughs> how crazy is that? Because he was that killing like? it in ECW. So you you could – he wasn't there long enough or didn't do enough in ECW to put Stone Cold on the ECW. No, 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 not at all. Uh, Paul Heyman was – essentially made he saw something the Attitude different. Era. Yeah, he saw something different. Brian Pillman and his saga went through ECW and was very big there. Um, yeah, I mean, Paul Heyman is ECW, so you're going to include him. You're not going to hear an argument from me. Yeah. Uh, you got a couple of wrestlers, though, that, that you think represents ECW? See, there's... Um, I, I bet if I sat and thought about it for a minute, I could think of a few, but the Ooh, only other ones that come to mind are like today. Just Insane. Just Incredible? Just Incredible, yeah. That's Just what it You remember, you know Just Incredible was in the WWF? Oh. It was out of Montoya. Really? really out of Montoya, the yellow jock strap on his yeah. head. Yeah. So a job guy in the WWF. All right. So Just Incredible did become a big star in the WWF around in ECW. Yeah. Basically, back then they had a working relationship, WWF and ECW. Like, oh yeah, Vin I know that. Vince basically didn't want the ECW guys go getting plucked from WCW. He'd want their top guys going to him if he could, and in return, Vince would send some of his lesser guys over to ECW. And out of Montoya was one of those guys who weren't doing anything with him. So Heyman took this guy and they said, I want you to be this kid who's pissed off. You're a talented wrestler. They put a yellow drop strap on your head. It's stupid. You're coming out there. You're angry at the world. And go get him. Wow. And Just Incredible took off. And the was one of their absolute top heels wow. for the last couple of years. There. I didn't, yeah. I didn't realize that at all. I didn't know that. So that was Paul Heyman taking a guy, and but whatever it says about Heyman was he would always highlight your attributes and 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 hide your negatives. Yeah. Uh, Public Enemy, you remember that tag team? I WCW? do. WCW, yeah. yeah. And they didn't make that big of a splash in WCW. I mean, they had you know some tables and some brawls and stuff, but they were huge in ECW, and it oh, was yeah. the same thing. He, these guys weren't great wrestlers. And they weren't going to have a great 10-minute match, but what they could do is they could brawl, they could take some crazy bumps, 
and they had charisma. So Paul did that. He would say, this this is the match you're going to have, and it's going to be five minutes, and you're going to do this, 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 and this, and you're going to crash through a table. And everybody was just like, oh, my God, the public enemy. we got to have these guys. WCW bought in. Yeah. Uh, we got to have these guys. And then when they just got left to their own devices, eh, they're just another tag team. See, public Heyman enemy. was amazing at that. You're you're absolutely right. See, I forgot about Public Enemy, but uh, to me, Public Enemy was kind of always just a more gang, more gangster, Dudley Boys. Yeah, I mean they were the hockey jerseys, and they they had the kind of the rap music when they were just brawlers they did tables. The, yeah. Now that's the thing is that Dudley's popularized the tables. Really, Sabu was probably the first to do the tables. Really? Was, yeah, Sabu was the one who really brought the tables into the fold. But the Dud or the Public Enemy was actually the one who really did the gimmick first really? was yeah getting the table and having a table spot that was it was a big thing where it was like if you had a public enemy match without the table spot it was just like huh that's it yeah yeah same as the Dudleys now i mean that's that's the gimmick you know they, no for they, sure they put somebody through a table at their hall of fame speech <laughs> that's how yeah over that spot is to their gimmick that yeah they're all about that so if you got one more now you say you kind of caught acw at the end so See, I would, I would almost throw, because the Dudley Boys were ECW. Oh, absolutely. I would almost throw them in there at number five, but Dudley Boys really were known for WWF. The yeah, end. they became Hall of Famers because of WWF, but they definitely, uh, they originated their gimmick in ECW, and if you go back and watch some of their stuff, watch those old ECW pay-per-views, you want to talk about heels? Yeah. Yeah. That's a smart crowd. That's a crowd that knows what they're getting into. Uh, they incited riots. They had people wanting to jump the, the, the guardrail, <laughs> yeah. wanting to kill the, the Dudleys. So those guys were great at what they did. All right, man, that's fair. Um, I, I was a little bit more in touch with ECW, and then with the network, I've gone back and kind of caught up. Uh, oh, yeah, I guess I could I, do that. Absolutely. Tommy Dreamer and Sam Man are just the two guys, like you said. I mean, we, we talked about them. Those guys represent oh. ECW. No, number five for me, Taz. Taz, see, there you go. Number five for me, Taz. Okay, all the way. okay. Taz, he was, might even be higher up there. Taz was a Heyman creation too. They basically, you know, Taz didn't bump unless Heyman wanted him to. Yeah. Taz definitely didn't get beat <laughs> no. unless Heyman wanted him to. He created, you know, the shooter. And you gotta think this is late '90s, so the UFC isn't what it what it would no, become. No, and he was pretty much built as like an MMA fighter. Exactly. And now you you think, yeah, when Ken Shamrock came along. You know, nowadays there's there's hundreds and hundreds of MMA fighters where it's it, you know okay you're an MMA fighter yeah there's a lot of guys back then you know bringing Ken Shamrock is the world's most dangerous man it's a yeah. badass and they built Taz that way even a couple years prior as, as this shooter as this guy that no this guy's for real this guy will choke you out he'll suplex you on your head yep dangerous dangerous dude <laughs> I, I like that pick as Taz I see I like I like Taz a lot too because I can't remember where I. No, Taz was talking about it on his podcast. He said that Paul Heyman used to tell him, never wear an orange towel on your head. Never yeah. wear a black one. Not only that, don't ever wash it. Let never it get stinky. I remember, I remember him saying, too, like his gross. wife would wash it. He'd be, it he'd be, be furious. <laughs> he'd be like, no, don't wash it. You yeah, can't exactly, wash the yeah. towel. <laughs> we must, you must have listened to the same thing. But like, yeah. Taz, was, Taz was the ECW guy there for a minute. Uh, that that's a good pick, man. So yeah, uh, there it was. Sorry to interrupt, but like, no, you're no, good. It came so to my mind. I I'm like, with Damn. you on Dreamer and Sandman. Uh, three you now, especially catching the late era of of ECW, ninety eight, ninety nine, two thousand. Oh, RV, how did I forget yeah, about RVD? RVD, I do that all the time. RVD kind of revolutionized, you know, the business and, yeah. and and what he did. All the spots he do with chairs now. You know, purists will hate RVD because it's not really a wrestling match. It's a little bit of a crash course of spot to spot to spot. Yeah. But they were cool spots. <laughs> they they were, were. There was nobody doing the stuff that he did. The Van Daminator was original at the time. Tossing the chair, catch it, and spin kick in the guy's face. All the spin kicks like on the on the uh, off the apron to the to the barricade and just the frog spl- just the hiding on the frog splash. And the thing is, is he wasn't a Rey Mysterio sized guy. He's a pretty big guy. No, he was big, bigger dude. Pretty big guy, and the way that he flew. He's short, I mean, but he, I mean, he was stout. stout dick, dude. Yeah, it was a ridiculously strong dude. And I think the RVD character was just perfect for ECW, where he looked like a guy that should easily be on Monday Night Raw or Nitro, and that was yep. the same as Monday Night. Look, you know, the Sandman was like, all right, this is this is the guy, this is the beer swelling like brawler in the bingo hall. Okay, he's ECW. RVD looked like he looked like a real wrestler, yeah. and he was a guy that was, but still represented ECW so well because of that. And then 
I can't ignore his tag team partner was Sabu. Oh, yeah. Sabu, again, man. Sabu, the independents. Now, I don't know about you. You, you probably run the WF magazine, but if you ever go to the store, you know, go to Walmart or uh, back in the day, Hills. Oh, right. wow, Hills. Yeah, right. Do you ever go through the racks and you see Pro Wrestling Illustrated? Yeah, I'd buy it every now and then. Every once in a while, man. PWI 500. Yeah, they would. I, I definitely. I bought a couple of the the women of wrestling <laughs> version they put out. All the different, like the top 100 list. They did. They had the top women list. I still even have those. But wow, the PWI was like you know you would get it because they talk about WWF and they talk about WCW. Mm-hmm. But then they have like independents and stuff too, and they would be names that you would see almost every single issue you pick up. Right, yeah. and Sabu was one of them. And Sabu, they had the pictures of him. They had the Hannibal Lecter mask on, and like you know, this dude that was you know, you just see tables and chairs and just this debris. And this is like ninety four, ninety five. So it was before like this all got big in the WWF. Yeah. So you wondered about Sabu. You'd see him do these moon salts and all that. So then you finally watch him in ECW, and this dude now. Granted, he botched. <laughs> he botched probably a good twenty five percent of all the stuff <laughs> that he did. But think about a guy running off of the ropes. One foot on the chair, then to the top rope, and then moonsaulting back, and lots of times on a table. Just the stuff that he did was really revolutionary at the yeah. time. There was hardcore guys. There was guys that could brawl. There was guys that would do use weapons and stuff. But the way that he would be innovative with it, there wasn't anybody like Sabu. Yep. And that was an ECW guy. He was there really the entire time, minus a cup of coffee in uh, WCW he had. <laughs> yeah, I like that term you used. Like, uh, he was just there long enough for a cup of coffee. Cup of coffee. I like it. So, so Sabu's my number four. Number five, there's a lot of guys I could throw in here. Taz is definitely an ECW guy. Uh, Shane Douglas, with the franchise Shane Douglas, uh, was their first ECW champion. Yeah, meant a lot. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Raven. Oh. I think Raven was a ECW guy to the core. You're you're right. The That's a Raven good one. character. Now the thing about Raven is is I didn't even know this until like later on in the internet era that he was Johnny Polo. In the WWF. I don't even know Johnny Polo. Johnny Polo managed the Quebecers. He had long hair and like a top hat. He was kind of like a preppy looking character. Okay, that sounds vaguely familiar. And he was Johnny Polo. He was Scotty the Body or Scotty Flamingo in WCW. He was just like another like kind of obnoxious heel. Yeah. All of a sudden, complete transformation turns into Raven, who really represented everything about what we talked about. The yeah. alternative crowd. Yeah. The Generation Xers. Like he... The rebel against everything. Even, even like when... I think when he went to WCW, the, mm-hmm. the music he had was a straight up rip off of, of like Even Flow or something. Or yeah, Come As You Are. are. Yeah, Even Flow was Jericho. Yeah, the rip off Come As You Are. The sitting in the corner, you know, to be a heel, you had to be, you know, ah, screw you. And then, no, man, he sat in the corner. He was just brooding. Yeah. And eventually he had that. What about me? What, what about, about me? And the whiner and everything. And I mean, it was such a great character. And he was he, emo. He was emo before. It was he was emo. emo before emo. Wow, existed. I never thought of it like that. And he was such a character that was that represented ECW. Like it was, there was some extreme stuff they did. Do you ever hear about the angle with the crown of thorns and crucifying the Sandman? No. You're in for a treat today. Wow. All right. Yeah, I'm ready for this. So, well, the angle with him and the Sandman was great. Uh, the Sandman, kind of, they, they 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 were the first to really blur the lines of reality in wrestling. Okay, so at one point, Raven had the Sandman's wife and his kid following Raven like he was a Jim Jones cult leader. What? Right? So his little six-year-old boy, you know, the Sandman tries to give him a hug, and the, his boy gives him the Raven pose and says, I walk with Raven now. And it's, I mean, it's hardcore stuff. So the one night, they end up beating the crap out of Sandman. They tie him up to a cross, and Raven wraps around a crown of barbed wire around his head. Oh, my okay? God. Okay? The best part of this is, you know who was in the crowd that night? Who? Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle, before he got into re- to the WWE, this is right after, hot off the Olympics, so like late 96. Kurt Angle's in the crowd. There, Paul Heyman was thinking about bringing Kurt Angle first. I think it was in Pittsburgh, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, Kurt Angle's in the crowd, who's devout Catholic. So Kurt Angle sees this, walks out of the building, says, I don't want any part of this shit. I'm done. Da, 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 wow. da. So Heyman, in order to stay face with Kurt, makes Raven like, go back to the ring and apologize. And he cuts, you know, can you imagine Raven? Most half-assed apology. Yeah, for anyone who I offended tonight, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a bike down. So, uh, man, oh man, oh man. There's, there's some DVDs. There's like the top moments of the BCW, and they have some of their TV on the network now. 
Yeah, Raven represented ECW to the core. No, I, I agree with that. I feel like we're having a great pod, and I'm educating you. Yeah, you know, for you, sure. There's, like there's that, so that right there much amazing. cool I stuff. I want to like type that into YouTube and see some see something. Oh God, yeah, man. So it's top Raven moments in ECW. Shit, yeah, you can go a long way with that. 